Hey guys, and welcome back to Them and Us. Well, I finally sort of got us back up to where we were. Uh, however, I wanted to show this off because this is something that I didn't actually realize when we went through it the first time. Looks like something small and circular can be placed here. Now, obviously that is referring to this ring here. And you can see the ring is indeed inserted into the small hole. But you don't actually lose the key, which uh, I thought was quite interesting. Anywho, let's continue our adventure through the swamp. And hopefully this time we're not going to get any uh, nasty errors or any crashes. Come on, you ugly bastards. Let's be having ya. There we go. Beautiful. Not bad. Not bad at all. Now, I believe our crash was somewhere up around here. Where we fought the new gribbly enemy. Which is kind of reminding me a little bit of the hunters, actually, from Resident Evil. <coughs> Just a little bit. And there he is. Now, they're not actually that much to write home about, to be honest. In fact... I would say these are really placid enemies. Only take a couple of bullets. And we are running kind of low on our handgun bullets here. So I uh, was hoping to record a lot of this yesterday. However, um, I was extremely sick yesterday. Uh, I had some weird virus that came out of nowhere. So, my missus works in a hospital, and she brings lots of weird and uh, wonderful <laughs> diseases back from that place, and uh, she got really sick last week, and I apparently caught it. Luckily, it took her exactly 24 hours to get better, and it seems to be the same for me. Uh, yesterday, I was completely bedridden, totally wiped out. And today, I feel like a newborn woman. So, all things are back to normal. Now, look at this gribbly little git here. They don't do anything. They just sit there and kind of aim at you a little bit. If you get too close to them, they'll start spitting goop at you. But they don't seem to ever get up and try and attack you or anything like that, which is really odd if you ask me, but whatever. And we're going to really exhaust our ammo supply here. But that's fine. We have plenty of other weapons to enjoy. So it looks like we found a cabin in the woods. How wonderful. Kind of Resident Evil 4 inspiration here. And uh, yeah, you'll, you'll see here what I mean by that later on. This bit sort of feels completely ripped from Resident Evil 4. Come on, baby. Come on. Let's get those accurate shots in because we really don't have too many rounds left at all. Now, I was a little bit concerned that we had somehow missed some notes and files in the last episode, but I don't think we have. So that's good. There's one in here. More bowgun bolts. Gatekeeper notes. Who is the gatekeeper? Note 4. Despite my best efforts at stealth, I was caught stalking the gatekeeper once again last night. This time, it was escorting one of the Elder Circle back from the swampland south of the mansion. I tried to get him for a closer look. As it appeared, he was carrying a woman over his shoulder. An outsider? Another possible initiate? I don't know, but my curiosity has gotten me in trouble. I have been ordered locked in my room until further notice, with meals and water being brought in by one of the other cult members. I wonder if they know about the ruins and the door underground. Some of them have told me that the master has planned to take me out to the swamp to make an example of those who do not listen to his instructions. I have heard stories about the swamp about how every time we get one of those tremors or the earth shakes, it's because of a great god that lives at the bottom of the bog out here. I thought that was just a myth, 
something to keep the other cult initiates from wandering too far into the mansion. With the ceremony so close, I hope they only mean to scare me. I have learned my lesson, Master. Truly, I have. Yeah, well, <laughs> I guess the, the Master isn't as benevolent. Benevolent? Close enough. As uh, he seems. Or at least as they're led to believe. Alright, let's just waste this swamp dweller. You know, it's not a horror game if you can't exact vengeance on the locals, is it? There we go. So this looks like a bit of a dead end. I do like this air. Oh, wow. I never looked at the sky. Whoa. That looks incredible, dude. That's getting a... Whoop. I was going to say that's getting a screenshot, but that didn't work out too well now, did it? <laughs> yep. Okay. Oh, and enter, please. This game is weird. It's not very stable at all. Uh, things like using the Windows key does nothing. It really doesn't like it when you bring up the Steam overlay. It just, this, yeah, this game just doesn't work very well. <laughs> uh, it is, yeah, definitely something to to bear in mind. And as for using it on a Z1 Extreme APU, uh, yeah, that doesn't work too well either. So we are going to just screenshot the old-fashioned way by using the uh, OBS. Okay. Ooh. Almost. See the little froggy bastard hiding in the reeds there. Let's see if we can't just bring him down with copious amounts of firepower. Lovely. All right. That'll do, donkey. That'll do. So, the cabin in the woods, huh? I wonder whose cabin this is. I'm sure we're going to find out. Although I should say more of a cabin in the swamp, really. But it is a wooded area as well. I like the detail here. I like all these logs that have been felled to actually make space for this place. You know, they really have put more effort in than you would imagine. And to be honest, like, I've really enjoyed this game. Sure, it's not Resident Evil or, you know, Silent Hill. But there's a lot of effort that's been put into this, and I can appreciate that. I like the way there's, like, some fries there, and, like, a Costa coffee mug there. Although, you know, I suppose I should say Starbucks, because that's the universally recognized coffee um, establishment. Although I don't really like Starbucks coffee, I'm going to be honest. I don't know why. It just, it, it doesn't taste as as strong and I actually looked into this at one point like why Starbucks coffee is the way it is because my favorite uh, coffee house um, or coffee chain I suppose is is Nero I don't know if Nero is unique to the UK but that's always been my go-to um, and I actually looked up a uh, in-depth research um, that looked into all three coffee houses. They did Nero, Costa, and Starbucks. And would you believe it? Starbucks ranked the lowest. And they also had the least amount of caffeine in their drinks with the highest sugar content, which I thought was really interesting. Uh, Nero's and Costa ranked about the same. Fog machine note. If anyone's looking for me, I'll be out at the island again. The damn generator keeps breaking down without it, and without it, the smokescreen device that the master has enchanted to cloak us will shut down. He wants to make sure everything is running smoothly for tonight's big event. I can hardly see what I'm doing out there with the fog being so thick. So I may be gone a while. If I'm not back before the ceremonial bells start ringing, somebody come and find me. It wouldn't be my first time getting lost in the mist. Edward. I'm assuming we just put Edward down. 
Now, looking at the state of this Jenny, you can sort of understand why they're having problems with it. It it doesn't look so good, you know. It really doesn't look so good. You know, with all the money that the master has invested into this place, look at that wrecked boat. I really like this area. All the money that the master has indeed. Zombie gas? Well, there's your problem right there. There you go. That's what's wrong with this place. Somebody's left canisters of zombie gas around. There, we're through the looking glass now, people. Busted this mystery wide open. But yeah, all the um, money that has been invested into this place, you would have thought that they would have brought a brand new generator. A strange device that looked like some kind of air pumping machine. Or, you know, air pump or whatever it's supposed to be. Okay, so we've got ourselves a save disc, but we cannot carry any more of those. Well, that's no good, is it? Let's leave that behind. Let's grab the save disc. Ah, we should probably leave that, actually. I should check everything. There's no turning back after this. I like the fact that we have a point of no return here, and the fact that the game completely illustrates it for us because you know one thing that i hate now this is something that's come up i've been playing a game called um evil west now the game itself is fantastic i'm really enjoying it i've been playing it on my xbox series x and my ally and there's loads of um or i would say loads of but there's as you're playing through the levels there's plenty of um choices on which path to take now a lot of them lead to secrets but it's never clear which is the right way to go which is the way to go for the story and which is the way to go for the secrets uh, and usually if you go the story path there's no way back to the secret path um, unless you you know restart the level again and that's kind of really annoying I hate it when you make, you know, when you've got, like, say you can go down the left path or the right path, and you pick the right path, and you have to jump over a log, but you can't then jump over it to get back. It's, yeah, it's just annoying. Stuff like that. Anyway, that's completely unrelated. No, obviously. So, let's go back into our little hidey hole here. Pull all of our items through. We've still got the dog whining away. Which is a little bit overdone, if you ask me. A uh, pistol is winchestered, basically, so we're going to drop that back. Let's grab all those shotgun shells. We are going to probably switch over to the crossbow, because we've got a lot of ammo for the crossbow. At least, at least I thought we did. I guess there's... Ah, oh, look, yeah, there we go. We've got like another 45 to bring forwards um we're still only like halfway to getting the unknown key which is brutal and i know i uh, we can't hold anything i know i keep saying that i'm going to look up what that key does but there's very little information on this game uh i am gonna grab that save disc and we're gonna use it uh now health wise <sighs> medium bandage i guess we're gonna keep these health items on us just in case i don't think we need the lighter anymore let's use the disc maybe i think we'll keep the uh mine bolts i don't know if we've got any more in storage we do just in case we need something with a oh wow we've got a few of those in case we need something with a little bit more pop to it we've been really careless with our save discs as well and uh, we have so many of them that auto save slot is uh <laughs> very handy as well let me tell you so we've got some health we've got some good ammo, I would say. Alright, we're going to keep the signet ring on us because I'm not sure if we're going to need that coming up. Alright. Let us head into the unknown. 
pretty sure we've completely explored this area now. Uh, can we get? Oh, we can go this way. Good, 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 good. Ooh, the game is saving. <laughs> <laughs> There's something about the keeper that is just not scary at all. His design, mainly. You know, Alicia, we really should have fought him off because he's just a useless dick. To be honest. So, this place is giving me Resident Evil 4 cabin vibes. What about you? Looks like there's not much going on here. There's a trap door here. Probably goes inside the basement. Yeah, yeah, probably. Hey, little girl, are you all right? Wait a minute. That scar. Oh, it can't be. Emily, <gasps> you? Mom? No, you need to leave now. It's a trap. No, I'm not leaving you again, baby. I'm gonna get you out of there, I promise. I have to find the key for the cage fast. Now, one thing that I thought almost straight away was if this was, uh, if Resident Evil was a Capcom game, they would be suing. Uh, if Resident Evil was a Nintendo game, I should say. They would be suing the pants off this developer. But luckily, the cage key is not here. It's a Capcom game, and they seem to be a little bit more chill than Nintendo. Because Nintendo will sue anybody that remotely copies their ideas. What's that? I hope this holds. What in the world is that thing? And what does he want from me? Who knows, Alicia? Who knows? Probably to kill you horribly. Cage key is not here. Well, I hope it's bloody well here somewhere. Otherwise, we're in serious trouble. You found the cage key. Now, it's randomly generated, apparently, where the cage key is. No! I like the way they leave her teddy there. And there's a photo which says, Go back, wake up. Which, hmm... Now, notice the flowers on her hospital side table there. They look like the same flowers in the uh, save room. I think we could have fought those guys off. Off into the sunset go we. I know you're around here somewhere, Adrian. I need to know what the hell happened to him. And here we are, we actually take off and start playing as Paul, which is really bloody cool. Now, Paul comes equipped for bear. I'm getting Barry Burton vibes here, especially with the silver, <laughs> silver falcon instead of the Colt Python. A powerful semi-automatic 44 Magnum hand cannon. And a police issue revolver has a six round capacity. 38 special full metal jacket rounds. Pretty good, pretty good stuff. We also have a combat knife. A US Army issued knife with a blade meant to cut through anything. Interesting. And we have a med kit as well. So, oh, he does have a flashlight. I was unsure. So, anyway, guys, I'm going to leave this one here because uh, this seems like a perfect place. When we come back, I guess we're gonna be looking for our friend, Adrian. Now, we know what's happened to Adrian. 
However, Paul is yet to discover that. So, thanks for watching, guys, and as always, till next time.